What's up guys? It's Ben 10,000 Joe, your friendly neighborhood Yu-Gi-Oh! superhero, and today we're gonna mess with the protector of Egypt. <laughs> Exodia, obliterate! I digress, guys. Today I'm going to be showing you my Mech Knight Exodia deck because one Divine Protector deserves an army to back him up. So, <laughs> so this deck is not a viewer requested deck. This is just something kind of my brainchild I came up with. Um, kind of as a... I wouldn't call this really a counter to a, another YouTuber, but there was another Yu-Gi-Tuber who I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want anyone thinking I have beef with this Yu-Gi-Tuber because I don't. I don't feel one way or the other. But he makes a comment about Exodia decks not necessarily being good decks. Now, that being said, uh, there was a, a Treasure Panda deck that topped an OTS that won got first place. So there's already a tournament win this year involving, you know, you know, a crazy, a crazy Exodia deck. So... In the spirit of all this Exodia madness, being that it's been a bit of the topic of the of the week, so to speak, in Yu-Gi-Oh, I've decided that I wanted to, you know, partake. So I decided, okay, well, if I was going to build an Exodia deck, what kind of Exodia deck would I build? And I kind of came to the same conclusion I came with Obelisk a little bit. I ended up putting in the Mech Knights. The Mech Knights are an easy deck thinning uh, strategy. They they are a great engine. A lot of Exodia decks are very back row centric, so I saw the synergy there. Like, oh, I could just set in back row and play the one Mech Knight I draw and usually go plus one. So, excuse me. So I didn't see a point in not doing it. So, uh, in case you guys are new here, because I know there's a couple of you that are new here, I gained after my 200 subs video, I got I gained five more of you. I was like, huh, okay. I mean, I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> Certainly not gonna go play it. I'm I'm just kind of like, yeah. On the inside, I'm getting giggling like a. Never mind. We're not going there. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you're new here, let me explain to you how we do things on this channel. We have this little discussion here at the front, and then I'm gonna play you some replay footage of the deck in question, and then at the end of the at the end, I will show you the final deck profile I came up with, my card choices, and explain everything and how it works. So. Without further ado, guys, let's get into those replays. See you on the other side.
is my Mech Zodia deck. I don't know what you would really call this. Just Mech Knight Exodia would probably be a really simple answer for that. But you know me, guys. I'm never going to name a deck anything, you know, that's probably, you know, something it should be named. I'm going to give like, you know, give it a silly name. So here you have Mech Zodia. Um, uh, essentially, it's a very Link heavy-ish deck. You have the extra deck right here. It's all Link monsters. Well, actually, we'll go over it real quick. But as you can see, we are playing the, all the Exodia pieces. We're also playing uh, Legendary Exodia Incarnate. And we're playing the, the key Mech Knight monsters. And th there's a reason for that. Obviously, uh, <laughs> blue and purple here search. And then, of course, you have your, your back row hater and you have uh, Eclipse, which moves zones, which is relevant for other cards. Um, Geki, Bone of the Field, you know, etc. Um, you probably might see a few cards in here that are a little wonky, and I'll get to the wonky cards in a minute. I just want to go ahead and gloss over the whole deck because I've been asked to do that in the in previous videos. So here you go, guys. I'm glossing it over. You know, that way you get to see the whole shebang. And yes, I did just say that. I know I'm immature. <laughs> All right, so obviously this deck is not a budget deck. Let's just go ahead and cut to the chase there. I usually do budget decks, but since this was just some, a fun idea I had in my mind, kind of to give that aforementioned YouTuber, uh, you know what I mean, something to roll his eyes at if he should ever come across it. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to say who it is because I don't want to start beef because, you know, I don't really have any beef with the guy. I just disagree with him, <laughs> you know? Um, I think Exodia decks can be viable, it's just my version is more centered around the Mech Knights and using the Exodia cards as support. So you have you have all the Exodia pieces which you want to send to the graveyard with Obliterate. And then of course we have Incarnate here, which will tribute one of these guys and have this monster that's like, oh, I'm unaffected by everything. Seems pretty good. Uh, the goal is to get like three of them in the grave and then to just toss them out there and have a big old 3000 beat stick, essentially. And then, of course, like I said, we got Obliterate to bounce stuff out of the way. We are playing Drowning Mirror Force because sometimes we don't draw a monster. And it would just be better to just what Drowning Mirror Force does. Uh, we get attacked, we throw it all back into the deck, and then my opponent is left with, like, two cards, which I was like, okay, that's pretty good. I tried a little few different variants. I kind of switched between various Mirror Forces throughout all the testing. Drowning seems to work the best as uh, if they happen to get through our front row, now we have an, actually a competent back row. Um... Then there's my little tech card, Rise to Full Height. You guys know me. Um, some of these cards you have to put in defense mode. Oftentimes that's Blue Sky, Yellow Star, and Indigo Eclipse. These guys often end up in defense mode. So my idea was like, okay, well then I'm going to go ahead and double their defense. And uh, I also have cards that leave the field like Link Karibo and uh, Purple Nightfall here. Since these guys leave the field, they're perfect to combo with uh, Rise to Full Height. So like I could go, okay... Uh, I'm getting attacked, so I'll activate Purple Nightfall, Chain Rise to full height in the graveyard, and then those both those cards get banished. I get a search, and my opponent can't swing at me at all, which saves my bacon. <laughs> and then, of course, Meg Knight's Call of the Haunted is the most degenerate card in this entire deck. I don't care what anyone says. Just the ability to bring back a Meg Knight and make an opponent's monster not work at all is hilarious. And so messed up. <laughs> Oh, man. I cannot tell you how many times I've been like, oh, no, <laughs> you know, but it is what it is. <clears throat> um, and then, of course, you have World Legacy's Memory, which is really cool because it lets us get a Mech Knight out of the deck, which I often just go ahead and get uh, Nightfall because Nightfall would end up back in my hand, but with the by using Nightfall's effect, he leaves the field and he comes back and he just never comes back to my hand, which is really powerful. Um, we got the Call by the Grave because we're not playing any hand traps. To be frank with you guys, I don't think there's just there just isn't any room with them. They'll, they'll clog this particular build, so this is what you need. Um, and then we have the scapegoats, so we can go for our big our big guns like Boral, Boral Load and Boral Sword. Um, the big link monster that most of the time you're going to use is going to be Morningstar, because it is such an underestimated card. It allows us to search our uh, legacy's memory and our world and our true depths. Um, we also have card destruction, you know, it just fixes our dead hands, puts Exodia pieces in the graveyard where we want them, or in some cases, uh, it puts e uh, Eclipse in the graveyard so we can use it with uh, 
World Legacy Secret, excuse me. Um, and then, you know, making the opponent can't use their monster effects. Ha ha! It's like giving them a big middle finger without flipping them off at all. It's bloody brilliant. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that's all I got for you. So this is my mech, my mech Knight Exodia deck, or Mech Zodia, as I like to call it. Um, let me know what you think of this crazy deck idea in the comments. Um, let me know, do you guys think Exodia decks are still relevant today, uh, even as a Tier 2 option? Uh, I mean, that's kind of how I feel about it. I feel like there's a way to make any kind of deck you want to build a Tier 2 at, at least. And this is what I came up with for Exodia, so make sure you leave a comment in below and let me know what you think. Uh, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Uh, and yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. I'm Ben10000YJO, your friend in the late neighborhood Yu-Gi-Oh! Superhero, and I'm signing off. Peace, guys.